Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm taking another look at Gore, this time with the mid-month changes. Thankfully, the devs listened to the player base and gave Gore some of the buffs that he really needed, including an iframe ignore. In this video, I'm going to be looking at whether those buffs were enough and whether the character now has value and is worth building. So on the PvE side, the character previously was able to clear stage 9 of Null with no leads or supports and no damage proc, with about 2 minutes left over. With the buffs to his kit, the character can now do the same stage 40 seconds faster, which I would say is a pretty reasonable improvement in PvE. Even though the character is much better in PvE now, I did take him into a stage 35 of Null with two supports, and unfortunately he wasn't able to do that without a damage proc. If the character was able to clear the first phase in at least two minutes, I would say that it is a good indication that he would be great for PvE. However, I don't really think most people are going to build him up, considering the vast number of resources that are needed to use him in PvE content. His damage output right now I would say is good enough, since it does match some of the later characters that we've gotten. He can now actually do Dormammu even without a damage proc, since before I was able to do the first phase with pretty much a little bit more than 2 minutes left, and now he can do it in under 2 minutes. Although the character was improved for PvE, his true value does lie in PvP, and you can see that from his kit, especially with the addition of an iframe ignore now. He does have one glaring issue with the new change, and that is that the iframe ignore skill, which is the second skill, doesn't really get prioritized by the AI. This isn't to say that the character doesn't use the skill at all, but he kind of uses it in the last instance, since the AI usually prioritizes the fourth skill and then the fifth skill, followed by the third skill. From there, it'll often use the second skill if it's the last one left, and rarely if the opponent is in iframe and those skills can't be used is when that skill is activated. This might be a pretty big negative for people who tend to play Timeline on Auto, for example, and even maybe in Alliance Conquest. I kind of need to test him a little bit more there, but unfortunately, because Timeline is kind of an indication of how he would perform in Alliance Conquest, I'm sure that he likely won't use his second skill too often there as well. However, the character is much better now for several reasons, including some ones that I'll cover in a bit, and he is arguably in the top 5 for timeline. That will depend on several factors though, such as which characters are banned for that particular week, and whether you play the character on manual or not. To put it very simply, the best comparison that I can make is that the character is sort of like the villain version of Sentry. Similar to Sentry, he isn't necessarily the greatest on auto, since Sentry kind of needs to use the fifth skill to do a lot of damage, and similarly, Gore needs to use the second skill to iframe ignore. Both characters also have a debuff leadership, however, Gore's only applies to villains, and they also have a bunch of super guard break in their kit on different skills, Gores being on the third and fourth skill. And obviously one of the other meta characteristics is that both characters also have a revive. Because of this, many people are already substituting out Thanos for him in the starting position, oftentimes because the opponent will use Hulk to start off, and if you have Thanos you immediately lose a character, however, because Gore does have that revive, you end up still having three characters to use. As you can see though, all of my matches have been on auto, and in all instances he's been able to win the entire fights solo. However, not everyone will be able to build up Gore as much as I have, so if you're wondering on particular build suggestions, I would say that, again, you can build Gore very similarly to Sentry. If you want him to be more tanky and maybe play him manually, then using something like a CTP of Regen or Authority will likely give you better value and have him be a little bit more protective while you can spam all of the skills. Between a mighty CTP of authority and a mighty CTP of region, I can't tell you exactly which one would perform better. However, because you can't cap out the mitigation with just the mighty, I would say that a mighty region might give you a little bit more value, but when you do get to the brilliant level, you can cap out that mitigation with the brilliant authority, so it seems that it's very similar to Thanos' case where a brilliant authority might be the better option at the very highest end. However, if you don't have that, I think that a CTP of Authority or a Regen will do equally well for him. 
Although I do think that he does perform a little bit better with a survival based build. If you do need that extra damage, similar to sentry builds, you can use a CTP of greed on him and he'll be able to one shot some of those peskier characters like Thanos that requires a little bit more burst damage. One other nice thing that I forgot to mention is that Gore does have a lot of lingering damage effects on his skills. So as long as you have one revive left or one character left on your team, your skills will still end up doing damage to the opponent and oftentimes killing them because they aren't going into anything like iframes. Besides that, Gore actually received some hidden buffs that weren't mentioned in the patch notes. I didn't immediately notice this while I was testing, but it became more clear after a post Chad Brochill made, so shout out to him, that Gore does actually have a kind of super guard break immunity. This is basically the same effect that the old uniform for Black Widow had, and it means that the character can't get guard broken or super guard broken and essentially never get head rocked. You can see that in this clip because the third skill from Makari doesn't lock down Gore. He's still casting skills while that effect is hitting him and he is taking damage. This means that if you're facing opponents that have a lot of super guard break in their kit, such as Sentry, you have an advantage versus them because you will never get locked down by it. The other unlisted effect in Gore's kit is that the second skill now also has super guard break added to it. As you can see from this clip, when I do use the second skill, even though this Hulk has guard break immunity from his regen, he's still being able to get head rocked and super guard broken being locked in place from the second skill spam. If you've already tried the character on auto and aren't really impressed, again, most of his value will come from playing him on manual. I recorded several clips versus different characters to give you some ideas of strategies that you can use versus those opponents. Very generally speaking, you often want to do the fourth skill first and then follow up with the second skill after he drops the sword into the ground to get the most burst damage possible. However, with the second skill having an iframe ignore and also being a long iframe itself, you don't always want to do that and you can use that skill to kind of protect yourself from damage such as reflect damage from Emma for example. So if you're trying to avoid taking damage from things like reflect or AoE effects, then just keep spamming that second skill till it's clear and you can follow up with the other skills in addition to the second skill. If you're fighting characters like Hulk though, I would recommend opening with the second skill first and then tacking on the 3, 4, and 5 after to burst him down. You don't want to use those other skills first before the two because most of Hulk's skill will basically one-shot you when you're out of iframe. When you're facing characters like Warlock, I would recommend using skills like the fifth or third first because they have higher priority, and if you do end up getting one shot, they do have lingering damage, so you can still end up killing him. Obviously, after you do those skills, try to go into the second skill to avoid as much damage and also lock him down from the super guard break that the second provides. So to summarize, when facing characters like Hulk, use the second first followed by the spamming of other skills, if you're facing characters like Warlock, do the 3 or 5th first and then follow with the 2nd skill. And if you're facing characters like Thanos where you need a lot of damage to take him out, open with the 4th skill and then follow up with the 2nd skill, cancelling and then using the 3 and 5 skills to attack on as much damage as you can. Because of the long iframe and the iframe ignore, you can hide in your second skill. So if you're facing opponents with a lot of reflect, then just keep spamming that skill over and over. The character is more decent now in Alliance Conquest as well. He won't necessarily be able to solo some high meta characters because the AI doesn't really prioritize the second skill too much, but because he does have that super guard break immunity, you can take advantage of that and use him versus opponents that do have a lot of that. So in this particular clip, I'm using him versus characters like Blue Marvel who has that super guard break on his fifth skill as well as versus opponents like Quicksilver who has it on his second skill and I believe his fourth skill as well. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to solo this set, although I did get pretty close with just Wolverine left over. Despite that, it highlights his additional value now since he's not just a leadership, you can use him to counter characters that have that super guard break and because of his leadership, you can pair him with some 
stronger characters to make the set even better. Like I mentioned before, he's going to play very similar to Sentry, and Sentry in Alliance Conquest isn't really the greatest, but is a good leadership and a good character to pair with other strong characters. I can't really tell you what those characters would be, since I still have to test a bunch of different ones, but I'll probably include it in a future video, most likely an updated Alliance Conquest tier list. To answer the question of whether he was buffed enough, and whether he is actually worth building up now, for PvE specifically, I would say probably not, because he doesn't really excel in that, but for PvP, at least for timeline, and specifically manual, I would say that you will get a lot of value out of using and building up the character. In Alliance Conquest, the value is a little bit less than Timeline, but you will definitely get use out of him there too. So basically, if you want to try to guarantee more wins in Timeline and get another Sentry-like character on your team, maybe to push for more Crystals at a higher rank, then Gore is a very solid addition for that. In addition, if you do rely on Sentry frequently to get wins in Timeline, then building up Gore will help you when Sentry is banned for that particular week. Overall though, I would say that the character did get buffed enough for PvP, though he could have probably used just a little bit more for PvE. But the best part is that the character now actually does have some use and good value in your roster, as opposed to the minimal to no value that he had before, so I would consider the buffs that the devs gave him a win for the community. Those are my thoughts on the changes to Gore so far, I'm curious to know what other people think, so if you do have an opinion on him, please leave that in the comment down below. As always, if you found the video informative or helpful, please consider liking or subscribing if you haven't already, and maybe sharing the video with others. I always appreciate people taking the time to watch these, so thank you, but the video is now over.